In the last couple of videos, I gave you a preview on some structures to model data like option, either, and list. As you saw, types created from these type constructors are composed of smaller types and pieces. In this video, first we will focus on composing types and creating what is called composite types or ADTs and then we will look into extracting values from these types, which the process is called pattern matching. Let's say we want to invent the concept of composing types. How can we do this? Where should we start? We can start from the smallest composable things, which in our case are primitive types, and build on top of it. For example, let's start with integer and boolean types. We already know that types are simply sets of values. So how can we compose these sets of values and create a new set of value? The first idea that comes to mind is to maybe pair the values. So for example, we can pair the integer tree with true and false and come up with two items in our new type. And we do the same for all other integers as well. For our composite type, each value inside the pair is called a field in our new type. The resulting composite type is called product type and is shown with a product symbol. Can you guess why this composition is called product? Well, the number of values in the resulting type, quote unquote cardinality of that type, is the cardinality of the integer type times cardinality of the boolean type. In TypeScript, we can model the product type in a couple of ways. We can use object type, interface, or tuples to compose other types. For example, we have a product type, user record, which contains two primitive types under properties name and age, and another nested composite type under address property. We can also model product types using tuples as I'm showing you in user tuple. Both ways are composing types and each can be useful in their own situation. All right, product type is one way to create composite types. But what other ways can we compose integer and Boolean? Well, another way can be putting every value from both types next to each other in our composite type. So our composite type contains all integer values and all Boolean values. But we have a challenge here. Before, we knew all values in the integer type are integer values. But now, in our composite type, we are treating all values the same. When we receive a value of our composite type, we cannot easily tell if a value is integer value or boolean value. If you feel it's easy to tell a value is apart, imagine if instead of composing integer and boolean, you were composing two general product types. How can we solve this challenge? By grouping and tagging the values in our composite type. In the context of programming languages, either the compiler does this for us, or we need to manually tag the types. We will look into how we can do this in TypeScript in a minute. The composite type that is designed like this is called a sum type, and each group in it is called a variant. Here we have two variants, integer variant and boolean variants. Some types are shown by the plus sign. And similar to product types, the reason for its name and the plus sign is that the cardinality of the sum type is the sum of the cardinality of its initial types. Sum type is also called coproduct, tagged, or disjoint union. In TypeScript, we can model some types using union types and the pipe symbol. 
Here we have a type num or bool and a type constructor either. Num or bool is a sum type of number and boolean. So a sample value of this type can be 12 or true. Either is a generic sum type that can have a left object type or right object type. Here you can see two samples of either of a string and number array. All right. Then what is this ADT everybody is talking about? Algebraic data type, or in short ADT, is simply a composite type using sum and product operations. Do not confuse ADTs with abstract data types. They are completely two different concepts. Abstract data type is a type that provides an interface to work with that data type, like a stack which has push and pop methods. Algebraic data types, on the other hand, talks about composing types. All right, we talked about how to create composite types, but eventually we want to use the data stored inside them. Consider the option of Boolean type. Let's say we want to create a function that converts this option type to a string. How can we do this? We know that option types are sum types, and they have two variants, none and sum. So in order to convert an option of Boolean to a string, we need to consider each variant. For each variant, we want to extract the data that they hold. For example, here sum is holding a Boolean value. After unwrapping our product types in each variant, we need to transform each to a string. Here, for none, we have a function that receives none and returns a string. And for sum, we have a function that uses the unwrapped Boolean value and transforms it to a string. And that would be the output of our two string function. What we did here is called pattern matching. We looked at each variant in option case by case, extracted data from each variant and transformed all of them to a string here. If all cases don't return the same type, then based on a design, we may get a compiler error or receive another sum type for pattern matching output. When doing pattern matching, your cases should be exhaustive and cover all the values from its input type. In our example above, we are covering all the values in option of boolean in two cases of none and sum of boolean. And we didn't leave any values from option of boolean behind. Can you guess why we need to cover every value? The reason is, if we model pattern matching as a function, that function should be total and cannot be partial, because we don't have partial functions in functional programming. In functional languages, pattern matching has a native syntax. In JavaScript and TypeScript, we have if and switch statements, but they are not expressions and don't return any values. There is a proposal for pattern matching feature for JavaScript, but it's in a stage one. Best thing we have natively for JavaScript and TypeScript at this moment is ternary conditional operator. In the next video, we spend more time on pattern matching in practice. But for now, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.